posted on Facebook and asked for questions for a question and answer. And so I'm going to share those with you now. And I asked like anything you want to ask. Some things are personal, some things aren't personal. And I'm going to go ahead and start right now. So this video isn't going to have a story time at the end because I don't have a story today and also because a lot of these questions contain little stories in themselves. So let's just do this. So Rachel asks, what is my biggest personal struggle? And obviously weight. My fat butt is my biggest personal struggle and I think when somebody struggles with weight, it's obvious, right? I mean, if you have a shopping addiction or, I don't know, you're really into like porn or you have whatever it is that you do that's your weird thing, it's really hard to know uh, because it isn't as obvious as someone who struggles with their weight. So for me, my biggest personal struggle is the fact that I tell myself that I deserve to treat myself. So I'm not like a binge eater with like blah, all the time, but um, every day I'm like having something sweet or I'm having a treat or I feel like dieting feels like punishment. And so when I go out, I'm going to get the dessert and I'm going to order things. And the problem with that is that I need to change my mind frame, obviously, and see food as like a nutritious fuel for my body and not like a reward, like, good girl, you did good today, have a candy bar. And so that's my struggle, that is my biggest personal struggle. And unfortunately, uh, it's really obvious to the whole entire world because you can't trick someone or hide it or keep something like that a secret because it's literally all over your body. So yeah, that's my biggest personal struggle. Kathy asked, how did I find out about the four different organizing styles? Or like, how did I come up with it? And the truth is, I just like failed hardcore at using detailed systems my whole entire life and thought I was messy and disorganized. And then I sort of fell into this whole dish pan thing. I bought a bunch of dish pans from the dollar store and started tossing my stuff into it. And I thought I was a genius, right? And then I thought there was two systems. So there was like detailed like detailed systems that is traditional organizing. And then there was like Cass's dollar store dish pan uh, thing and there was two and I had discovered the second one and I'm a freaking genius. And I started like organizing friends and families and clients. And then lo and behold, I discovered that that didn't always work for everyone. I had a client actually was a lawyer and I had set up this fast and easy paper system for her and she's like oh, the shock and horror on her face. I had all her bills together in one bin called bills. Her head almost exploded, but she also couldn't use a traditional filing cabinet. So then I was like, head scratcher, like what the deuce, man? So uh, I saw she had everything like spread on her floors and spread on her desk. And then I realized maybe she's visual, like maybe she needs to see it. And that's what the problem is. So I hung a bunch of file folders on her walls and she, it was like a light bulb moment for both of us. She was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what, I, what I'm craving. You know, really detailed and really categorized, but visual. And then that was like when I, it dawned on me, it's like, whoa, it's not just about simple and detailed, it's also about hidden and visual. Uh, so it's, I mean, that's, that's basically what happened. <laughs> So Tiffany asked, how did I meet my husband? So I was working full time at like the city or something and I was super broke because like living on my own, just trying to make ends meet. This is when I had first transitioned from like squeegee kid homeless to having my own place. I think it was like a year or two later. And so I had a part time job at a bar and I was literally the worst waitress ever because math is hard and people would be like can I get a beer and two coolers and a shot and a blah 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 and then I'd get the drinks and I'd come back and I'd have to add it up in my head needless to say I probably looked like a complete moron because that's just not my thing so I'd be like ten dollars and I'd always end up owing money at the end of the night so I didn't work there long but there was a bartender there and um, he completely ignored me like paid zero attention to me and didn't even like make eye contact so I found that frustrating because at the time, 
I was way skinnier. Can I, let's just start with that. And still like sort of obnoxious and loud. And so people generally noticed me and he didn't. And so I was like zeroed in on him like some sort of crazy person. I was like, pay attention to me, person who won't pay attention to me. And it turns out I think that he was not paying attention to me because he was just like cripplingly shy. But I thought he was ignoring me because he didn't think I was cool enough or something. I don't know, there's probably some Freudian crap going on in my brain of why I needed this person to notice me. Um, so I asked him out and and I guess the rest is history. So Christy asked if being a work at home mom gets to me sometimes. And yeah, it's challenging. I think, I think it's most challenging in the summer because my kids are home. Um, I tried putting them in camp and you would have thought it was like some sort of like work death camp by the way they behaved and so they don't they don't go anywhere they stay home so then I'm trying to work full-time while having three kids at home and even when they do go to school they're only at school for six hours and so yeah it's it is a challenge I have an employee who helps me out so we're trying to like work around my kids and and the space is limited in this house it isn't a big house to set up lights and cameras and all the stuff that uh, it sounds way cooler than it really is but um so yeah it's ch it is it's challenging but uh they come first right so they have doctor's appointments and hockey tournaments and all the things or if they're sick at home uh they come first because my first job is being a stay-at-home mom and the work at home thing I just sort of like try to squeeze in here and there which is why I'm not always consistent with the uploading to YouTube. So Jody asks do I feel that my privacy is affected by uploading on YouTube and you know what I I basically tell you guys everything and I'm really just open and whatever because I don't know you you're like no I'm talking right this minute I'm talking to myself and so yes I'm putting it out on the internet but it doesn't really feel like that to me because I never really meet anyone or anyone talks to me about what I put on and most of my friends and family don't watch my YouTube channel and so it's very disconnected from my personal life and I really hope it stays that way. There have been a few times where I'm out in public and someone has recognized me and I die inside like I legit just feel like uh, it feels like being naked in public sort of feeling um, because it does feel like I'm just I'm just sharing kind of to myself or whatever like I know you're watching I know you're watching uh, but it's so much easier for me to talk to you um, when I'm not face to face to you if that makes total sense so is my privacy affected probably like I'm putting everything out there, just airing all my dirty laundry, but I don't have to feel any of those repercussions or those uncomfortable feelings because I can't see the look on your face, right, as you're watching this and you're not talking about it to me later. And so it could all come back to bite me in the butt one day, but fingers crossed, it doesn't. And I really want to answer all your questions, but this is the last one just for time restraints. Randy asks my favorite, like, time saver multitaskers when it comes to cleaning the house because I'm legit lazy like here's the thing my whole basically the whole blog my whole reason I got into organization in the first place was so that I could spend less time looking for stuff and cleaning I just want to like I want all of that stuff to be on autopilot so yeah that's like my main goal how can I get the same results with like way less time one of my favorite things is doing a one product wonder and that means like finding a product that cleans legit all my surfaces so I really like like a multi-purpose cleaner I have a bunch of favorites like not just one favorite uh, some are homemade I like a methods glass cleaner but something that I can use on glass I can use on wood I can use on like laminate or whatever every surface my stone countertops and I just have to walk around with one product and just wipe 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 as I go uh, it just saves so much time and it's one of my favorite time savers I'm actually a big supporter too of letting the product sort of do the work for you which may be a little controversial but when it comes to the bathroom I like a bleach spray like I'm just like I don't want to scrub a toilet with a toilet brush dude so I just like spray a bleach spray in the toilet and I walk away I call it the spray and walk away technique or I spray down 
down the shower and then the next time I'm in it I just like shower and rinse it off or I wait 15 minutes or whatever and so like a bleach spray isn't my my one product wonder but it's the thing that I use on like the tough dirty gross stuff like the handles of my fridge that gets stained or the light switches that that plastic that seems to like absorb gross stuff I'm totally all about just using like a heavy-duty bleach cleaner it's gonna kill germs it's gonna disinfect it's gonna like get rid of goo but I don't have to scrub so and when it comes to dusting, I'm a huge fan of like a duster, swiffer, sweeper thingy on a stick. And I use like the long extendy stick that can be short or long because I can do cobwebs in the corners and light fixtures and picture frames in the top of door jams, which people neglect a lot. And also like the bottom of the baseboards too. Like I can just quickly walk around and in 10 minutes get those hard to reach dusty places that are sometimes neglected. Uh, quick and easy to the point and if you spray it with a little bit of end dust actually it helps not only like knock the dust down but really trap it in and so I just I love them so thank you guys so much for watching the question and answers I have a little tickle in my throat I'm still not over this sickness it's like the never-ending sickness I've had antibiotics and then I got better for like a day and then they were over and now it's back and it's a thing hopefully I'm not dying I'm sure I'm not dying but anyways, so I feel kind of crappy, but um, that's it. I know you're like story time, but this was kind of a long story time. So I'll see you freaking next time. <laughs> Is that just how I'm ending it? That, that's how I'm ending it. Bye.